For lead trumpeter Pauly Cohn, his days with Count Basie were among the most important in his life. Those experiences, key moments on his hero's journey, have informed his thinking to this day, when, at the age of 90, he continues to lead the Pauly Cohn Orchestra. Here, he remembers an encounter with Count Basie and tenor man Eddie Lockjaw Davis, who supervised the Basie band at that time. The band is going to go to Europe. And to go to Europe, you need a passport. So, so I said, uh, base, I got it, but it's in, in the trunk of Miami. So would you take, go and get the plane, and by the way, while you're there, here's a couple hundred dollars, I want you to call so-and-so and get something for me. I don't have to say what it is, right? So I said, okay, I'll do it for you. So the doctor happened to come by, he said, what are they doing going to Miami? In a very loud voice, because he felt, Superior, because he was straw boss of Count Basie. Of course, he resented the fact that when I told him what I wanted money-wise, I said no, and he had to go and say to Basie, and Basie said, you go hire him at his price. He didn't like that. So there was right away a friction on his part. And my part, I didn't give a shit about him. Plus the fact, when it came to joining Basie that night, I was packing up, and Lockshaw comes into my room and says, what is with you? We gotta leave soon. I said, just a minute, I'm packing up the best I can. I'm not used to this. I'm doing the best I can. Well, hurry it up. You know, I look at him, I said to myself, he and I are not the same people we were when I used to drink with him in 52nd Street. So now he's a straw boss and he's taking on this big attitude and nobody I like better than to cut down people who have that attitude. I always had that going for me. You know, I didn't care how big you were or how much you thought of yourself. If you fuck with me, you're making the wrong, you're making a mistake. So, when it came to that this instance where he was mad at basically to take him in his part, he told he's gonna do something for me. Oh yeah? Well, how is he gonna make sense out of it? He's going to Miami. So I interjected to him, I said, listen, I know what I'm doing, basically agrees with me, I'm gonna do what I gotta do and get the passport. And I'll see you in Cincinnati. Don't worry about that. I know how to use an airplane. So he looked at the patient and said, you're taking his part against me? Like I'm the boy and I take care of you? Basically, don't worry about it. Paul's gonna be able to do it. Like a father talking to his son. He just went past that stupid locks of wood at that point. And basically, in, in his way, like young people, and he knew how come they can make mistakes. And he forgave you right in front for making a mistake. This is an excerpt from my film, Pauly Cone Trumpeter. I want to preserve the history that Pauly Cone represents, and I need your help. I'm funding this film on Kickstarter, and your contribution, no matter how small, will help me keep Pauly and his jazz associates in the limelight instead of on the scrap heap of oblivion. Thank you. <laughs>